Hey guys, today we're going to install Linux on the Power Mac G5 and see how it works compared to OS X Leopard. So without further ado, let's get to it. Alright, so first things first here, I'm going to head over to the LUbuntu downloads page. They seem to be the newest version of Ubuntu that I can run on PowerPC architecture. Um, the newest version is 16.04 LTS, which was released 2016, um, but it's supported for three years, so this is the last year of support. I figured I'd give it a shot. I downloaded the ISO file, put in a blank DVD, and burned the ISO file to the disk with Disk Imager. After that, I'm just going to shut down the computer. And from what I read online, this should actually be it. I can just boot straight to that disk like I would any version of Mac OS, kind of like my Mac Pro. I was expecting there to be some sort of open firmware command line gibberish I had to do, but it was actually really easy. It just booted right up. And we have a command prompt. Okay, let's see. Type live to go. Okay, it looks like we type live to go to the live CD. Type that in and hit enter. Not gonna lie, it's been quite a while since I've used Linux. Okay, GPU lockup, switching to software FB con. I don't know what that means. Files not found, that's never a good thing. And that don't look too good. So I left it sit at this screen here for a solid 10 or 15 minutes before powering it off and nothing changed. So let's try that again. This time we're going to type in the live video equals OF only command and see if that changes anything. I don't honestly know what this command does. I am way rusty when it comes to Linux, but we'll see if that fixes it. Loading kernel and dead screen again. Okay, I've long suspected that the G4 7800 GT Mac Edition I put in this has something wrong with it on the hardware level. It doesn't perform as fast as I would expect it to, and it has some weird lighting effects in some games, and Sarbroughton just crashes if I have shaders on, so I think there might be something kind of failing with the 7800 GT. So I'm going to try pulling that out, throwing back in the 6600 that came with it, and see if that will work with Linux. The odd thing is, the 7800 GT works fine for literally everything else in macOS. I don't, I don't know what the problem is with it. Alright, booting back up here, back to our CD. I'm going to type in the same live command without the video OF only thing. And we have a mouse. And we have a desktop! And a user interface. We are up and going, it looks like. All right, double-clicking on the install Lubuntu. It's actually pretty snappy. It seems to be working pretty well. This looks like literally the exact same installer from the regular Ubuntu. It's just kind of recolored in a few places. And it doesn't look like it's changed a whole lot. The last version of Ubuntu, or any Linux for that matter, that I used as a daily driver was Ubuntu 13.10, I think. I only have one hard drive in here at the moment. I took out my SSD that macOS is installed to just to simplify this a little bit so I can just erase the whole disk and go ahead with installing Ubuntu. Let's see if it can detect my Mac keyboard. Nope, it just wants the English US. Is Macintosh in this list? Oh yeah, there it is. I'm just blind. All right, my name is Griffin. Yeah, we'll just leave it at Griffin. Griffin, Power Mac G5. Username works. 
same password for every other computer. Don't do that though. And we should get a little screen. Nope, we don't get the little walkthrough to. Uh oh. Sorry, Ubuntu 16.04 has experienced an internal error. If you notice any further problems, please try restarting your computer. Send an error report. Exec executable path WebKit error. Hmm, maybe that's why we don't have that little walkthrough tutorial thing. Will it continue without it? It doesn't seem like it's crashed, so... Okay, everything finished up, and we are good. Installation is finished. Restart now. See if it will automatically boot to the hard drive. And it will. Have some command line stuff. Kind of reminds me of booting up a Raspberry Pi. Purple screen. Mouse. And we got the interface back. Password. And... And, oh, what happened to the wallpaper? We're in. Let me see if I can fix that. It looks like it zoomed in a bunch. Yeah, this is exactly like using a Raspberry Pi, basically. It's the same LDXE interface. So let's see here. Ethernet works, or at least the controller is detected. Let's see if we can get a Chromium build. Pseudo app get install Chromium, punch in the password. Nope, package has no installation candidate. No Chromium for PowerPC. We'll try Firefox here. Loads up pretty fast for our hard drive. And let's see here, youtube.com. We'll see if that works. That's always a pain point on PowerPCs. And we have the newer YouTube version. It's kind of odd, the window sort of tears, like there's no VSync when you're moving them around the desktop, which is kind of a bummer. see here let's bump under where is the hmm where's the task manager it's probably right here and i just don't see it um monitor settings network open box software manager system tools printers lx terminal time and date user groups there we go task manager all right cpu use uh-oh why is that drawing weird? Firefox crashed already? Come on, we weren't even watching a video. It shouldn't have crashed yet. Hmm, nope. I guess we'll kill that task. Let's try this again. CPU usage is actually really good. It's not nearly as uh, high as I thought it would be for running a newer Linux distro. Okay, back at YouTube, it's still, and the CPU usage plummets again, it stops working. That is weird. We're not even watching a video yet, so I don't know why it would be crashing. Yeah, and we got the same draw issue thing, like Firefox itself crashed, not just the web page. That's kind of weird. All right, let's try something else. I'm going to install two of my favorite Linux programs, Clementine for music playback and VLC for video playback. I'll give that a test here. I'm surprised there was a Clementine package for PowerPC, to be honest. All right, but there is, and it seems to work pretty good. Open the file, I copied a song over from my archive drive. And there is absolutely no audio coming out. So I fixed the audio with some command line wizardry because my camera battery died and I did that while it recharged. Check the description of this video for the link to the solution. It's like a nice walkthrough. And after doing that, it works perfectly fine. As you can tell, this was recorded right off of the Power Mac. Still can't get Wi-Fi working, but at least we have sound and debatably that's more important. Still cannot get Firefox working. It's crashing like regularly with most of the web pages I try. So let's try a video here. This is a 1080p MP4 file I downloaded off of YouTube. Um, 
works perfectly fine without a hitch in VLC for Mac OS X Leopard. Kind of doesn't seem... Okay, there it goes. It's working fine now. Yeah, this actually works pretty good. It's about the same as it is in Leopard. It's not dropping... Oh, wait a minute. Spoke too soon. That's weird. Okay, I happen to know there's nothing wrong with this video file. Because I just played it off my archive on Leopard, and it works perfectly fine. Yeah, we're having major frame drops and really bad artifacting. That's kind of weird. Hmm. Okay, well, enough of that. Firefox doesn't seem to be working too well, and I have checked. This is the newest version available for PowerPC, at least officially. So, yeah, that's that. I don't know if anyone else has a build hanging around. System program problem detected. Do you want to report the problem now? No, I don't. <sighs> well, that's, that's about going to be all for today. Um, I could probably sit here and work through most of these problems, getting Wi-Fi working, maybe finding a newer build of Firefox doesn't have these problems, but at the end of the day, it's application of Firefox. Closing, but yeah, you don't say, genius. It's closed a lot of times now, thank you very much. At the end of the day, it's just the support and the community behind Leopard and even Tiger to a certain extent for PowerPC is just so much greater than that of Linux on the Power 5 architecture. So you're really kind of better off, for now at least, running Leopard. And that's going to be it. I wasn't really planning on switching, I just wanted to see how well it worked and it actually worked pretty good. The interface was fluid and everything worked pretty fast. RAM usage wasn't too high or CPU usage wasn't too high. Um, it's just, it's gonna be more finicky than running Leopard. And that about wraps up this video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you liked the video. Leave me a comment down below letting me know your thoughts on Linux on the PowerPC platform. And consider hitting subscribe if you'd like to see what I make next. I'll see you guys next time.